Akinjo oh, over man. the top of Brockington. What a shot. Akinjo kicks it, Brown reverses and scores. Watch out. Akinjo knocks down a three. Last five games, John, 18 points, six assists. James Akinjo, named Big 12 Men's Basketball Player of the Week. 21 and a half points, six assists, two and a half steals. The best thing about coaching James is that James doesn't need us. He just needs guidance. We're tinkering with James, and we just tinker 1%, and then he gets better. We can't take credit for that. It's his willingness to grow. If we're just being honest, there's not really, like, it's a really small point guard class as far as, like, elite talent. Yeah. I think at this point, you're probably first-team All-American. At this point, you're probably player of the year. You are on Ken Palm. So, like, as things go really well for you, like, some of your success has got to, like, spill over. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. How, do you feel the same thing, or you tell yeah. me what you think? Definitely. Yeah, like, what you said yesterday, uh... I think over the course of a game, you don't even think about, like, I mean, you try to involve everybody, but John had two points. Like, you don't even think about stuff like that. So that's something I'm aware of now, and I'm going to be getting involved moving forward. But your footwork is cleaned up. Your setup into the ball screen is cleaned up. Finishing at the rim is cleaned up. Your balance on your three-point off shot is tri triple three is cleaned up. Like, everything's cleaned up, and you know who did all that? You. And really, nobody should be taking credit for that but you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, sometimes you got to bring people with you. Yeah. And without knowing it, like, we go from great to almost unguardable. If just, if just two of your eight assists could be to a big guy. I've been having a nickname, Big Game James, since high school, mainly because of the way I perform when the lights are on and in big games. Like my dad always told me, when the lights is on, it's time to perform. It's up and a three. I found him to be one of the easiest guys to coach that we've ever had. It doesn't mean he changes immediately. He doesn't mean it doesn't take time for him to learn things. But very few kids can I just say, you're lying to me or you're not doing that good enough. And they say, yeah, you're right. The thing I'm most confident in is that he's the best point guard in America. And sometimes in the middle of that success, in the middle of that dominant personality, people either don't know or they don't need to think about what he's been through. I think that my life has had a lot of hardship and my path has been anything but easy or anything but normal. Growing up, like a lot of people always ask me, like, uh, you know, where your attitude come from, where your grit, where your toughness, uh, where your mindset, all that come from. I'm kinda just gonna show y'all now, for real. When you talk about Oakland, it's the only projects in Oakland. You know what I mean? So, when you talk about Oakland, and you talk about violence and stuff, Acorn Project is the heart of the violence. The neighborhood was, was rough. It, it was hard. We didn't know it was hard. I mean, we was kids. We were just having fun. Right here, we're in Acorn, Notorious Acorn Projects, but this the basketball court right here. Play one-on-one -on -one in front of everybody, in front of the whole hood, but uh, this is where uh, I used to be doing a lot of that right here. He used to bring me down here, have me work out in front of everybody sometime. I ain't like it. It was fake embarrassing and stuff, but uh, you know, this, this, this kind of where you get, you know, the toughness and the grit and stuff like that from. Yeah, you know. It kind of build toughness and the grit that you see in the way I play. Not letting nobody push me around, uh, not backing down, and not being scared of nothing. It's the Boys and Girls Club I used to go to. Every day after school, like, you know, my grandma wanted to keep me out of trouble, so she used to always have us go to the Boys and Girls Club, but this is what trouble was. But I don't know who work here no more, but we're going in. All my friends, they were all older than me, and my grandma used to hate it. She would hate the fact that I would be around people that were older than me, but hanging out with kids my age, they weren't where I was at mentally. You can see me right here when I was real young, <laughs> trying to play defense. Man, that brings back a lot of memories, man. I remember that picture. I remember that exact moment, that's crazy. What picture, that one right there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one right there.
Most of the time, you have to fight just to get on the court. This is the gym. They redid the gym right here. Everything you did and everything that we did growing up, uh, we had to kind of take it. Nothing was ever given to us, and it's the same way for me now. Whenever you want to step on the court, you got to be prepared to fight. This is where I started at right here. This is when I started, you know, first competing, and really playing one-on-one -on -one in front of the whole neighborhood and, and really getting competitive and really getting tough. Like, I done had a thousand fights in this court right here, just playing basketball. And it's so much talent that I didn't play on this court, but it's not here to tell the story that I'm telling today. You know what I'm saying?